On any list of influential Kentuckians, you should find the name of Colonel Charles Young. He was born in Mays Lick in 1864, graduated from West Point, and went on to have a distinguished military career that included command of the U.S. Buffalo Soldiers. But there's much more to the life and the story of Colonel Charles Young. Colonel Charles Young was born in 1864 in Mays Lick, Kentucky. He came out of a family of enslaved Africans shortly after his birth. His father left Mason County, Kentucky, went to Ripley, Ohio, joined up with the Union Army, and shortly thereafter came back and moved his family from the cabin all the way to Ripley, Ohio, for freedom. Charles Young was homeschooled by his mother who was educated and can read. Knowledge is power and his education is the most powerful tool. He understood that. In Ripley, Ohio, the schools were segregated, so he attended the black uh, elementary school. As he attended high school, uh, the, the black school just didn't have courses that, um, that were hard enough for him, so he actually went to the white high school. So he was first black student to graduate from the white high school. In the summer of 1884 began his five-year journey at West Point. Charles Young then and later in life was always very, very strong in the humanities, but he flunked mathematics his first year, so he actually had to go through his plebe year, the most difficult year at West Point, twice. Of course, Charles Young had to live through the discrimination. Colonel Young was what we would call a race man meaning that he was looking for the uplift of his race. He realized that if he failed at his task, it was more than just him failing. After West Point, he joined his regular army assignment with the 9th Cavalry at Fort Robinson, Nebraska. He sent action with the 9th Cavalry, the Buffalo Soldiers, out in the wild, wild west. And then he was assigned as the first professor of military science and tactics at Wilberforce University in Ohio in 1894. May of 1903, he was assigned summer duty at Sequoia National Park. He was the acting National Park Superintendent for that period of time from May to, to October of 1903. So became the first African American to, to be a National Park Superintendent. Very soon after that, he was assigned as the first black military attache to Haiti. From there, he went to Liberia. From Liberia, he went to Nigeria. When he went to these countries, not only was he laying out maps, but he also was recording a lot of the history and what was going on politically in these countries. So this man had an awesome responsibility gathering vital information that was critical to the welfare of the United States of America. Charles Young was a, a very talented uh, linguist. Uh, he learned uh, in his lifetime from, from high school on through West Point and, and through his military career, he could speak fluent German, French, Spanish, and then he dabbled in another half a dozen languages. The extent to which he wrote was also kind of a, a surprise. It seems to me that the amount of material we have, every moment that he had free, he must have been writing or, or formulating some ideas for, for his poetry, for his music. Uh, Charles Young published a book in 1913. It was titled The Military Morale of Nations. Charles Young was a talented musician his whole life. Started in his youth, he played the piano or the organ at two different churches. He could play the violin, he wrote a lot of music, illustrated the covers, he was a pretty talented artist. He served in Mexico from 1916 to 1917 with Pershing, chasing Pancho Villa during the Mexican punitive expedition. The United States in 1917 was preparing for World War I. Charles Young went up for promotion to colonel, but during the medical examination in 1917, they detected some medical issues. They discovered that he had very high blood pressure. He had acquired several diseases. But because of his ability as an officer and he looked so physically fit, the board recommended that those medical conditions be waived and that he be promoted so he could be sent to Europe to assist in the coming war. To show his fitness, 
Colonel Young rode by horseback from Wilberforce, Ohio, all the way to Washington, D.C. To go that far, to ride your horse from Wilberforce to Washington, D.C., just to prove a point, shows not only his level of patriotism, but just how fierce he was when it came to someone saying, you can't do something. The recall to duty got de de delayed. A lot of historians feel that the real reason was that there were a number of senators from Louisiana that did not want their white boys serving under a black officer. And they went to Woodrow Wilson and convinced him not to let that promotion go through. After the war ended, they recalled him to active duty and offered him second assignment as military attache in Liberia. Charles Young's devotion to duty caused him to accept the assignment in spite of the risk to his health. He died in Lagos, Nigeria in January of 1922. His body was returned to the United States the following year. He was buried with full military honors at Arlington Cemetery on January 1st, 1923. He was a trailblazer for his race in the military. For many, many years, he was the lone black regular military officer. He felt compelled to be a mentor for other African-American officers. He knew he had to bring more African-American officers into the officer corps. He saw action in Mexico. He saw action in the Dominican Republic. He sees actions in the Philippines, Liberia, Nigeria. Colonel Young was a man of his time, but he was the man far ahead of his time.